it's officially almost spooky season. I want to show you my favorite way to decorate my doorway for trick-or-treaters inspired by the Harry Potter dining hall floating candles. You're going to need a couple things. One of the things you're going to need are some electric candles like this. These little tea light candles are great. If they have a remote control option, even better. You'll also need some paper. You'll need some scissors, something to mark this down with possibly some tape, some fishing wire, and lots of hot glue. If you've got the low temperature ones, it'll be even better so you don't burn your fingers. To get started, the first thing you want to do is take one of your candles and trace it out two times. We're gonna need a little shelf for the top part where we're actually going to set our candle in, and we wanna close off the bottom since they're gonna be hanging, and we don't wanna see into the candle structure. Once you cut out these two circles, neither of these need to be perfect. We're going to be gluing these in place. One can actually be a little bit larger and it might help you in the long run. Then in order to actually wrap this up and make the cylinder of our candle, break the fiber of the paper. The best way to do this is to take the side of a table and actually run it along. And this will make the paper curl instead of fighting you and kind of bending and making creases as you roll this around the candle. because so we want to make sure it's actually going to fit in there. Then you can close this off either using something like hot glue or clear cellophane tape. I preferred the cellophane tape, but I did do both things and they both work pretty well. I made these a few years ago and I actually built the candle into them and glued them in place and it did look a little more seamless but then when the batteries ran out, I couldn't replace them easily. I had to completely dismantle this whole thing. So I'm actually going to build a little shelf into this. I want to just test fit to make sure my candle fits in there and my little circles do. Then I'm gonna put a little glue in there and I'm actually going to secure this just about an inch down or half an inch down, whatever height your candle is so that you're gonna be able to rest this in there. Then you're also gonna to wanna to close off the bottom because we don't wanna see the inside since these are gonna be floating and you'll be able to look up at them. Neither of these need to be perfect. One's gonna be on the inside, the other we're gonna be covering with glue. Once we have our little shelf and we've tested this and everything is working, it's time to actually start dripping some hot glue like it's hot wax. You may notice that there is a pretty visible seam on these candles once you tape them down. And we want to put a big drip of this glue down the side of this. I really, really recommend that you use a low temperature hot glue so that you don't burn yourself because it will dry faster so you'll be able to build up layers. But again, we are putting glue all over this and the chances of you touching it are gonna be pretty high. So use a low temperature hot glue just to make sure that you save your fingertips because hot, hot glue can get pretty hot. As you put the glue on, it's going to seem translucent, but as it cools, it will become a little more opaque. And so if you actually load up that glue along that seam, you'll completely cover it and it will look like a big drip from a candle. I also want to vary these depending on the candle that you are making. Some you can have a larger drip, some you can have drips, big drips on multiple sides. Some you might want to just have the one big drip to cover that seam and then drip along the edges. Do what you kind of feel for this, and then you're going to repeat this process over and over again until you have the number of candles that you want. For today's tutorial, I ended up making about six candles so that I could set them up by my bookshelf. When I actually do put these up on my front porch, I will probably make at least another six, if not more, just to make sure I've got a whole bunch and it's really magical. We need a way for these to hang without it being super visible. So you can use some fishing line or some clear line, whatever you have. I actually have some actual fishing line. So that's what I'm going to use. I find it's best to either use a little loop or to tie a knot so you've got a loop so that there is actually something for the tension from the line to hold onto once you place it into some glue. You'll notice here that everything has started to dry a bit so it's becoming a little more opaque and I can actually layer more drips on top of the other drips. Candles have a lot of different layers, especially if you burn them at different times. And so when you add on your fishing string, I put one on each side. You can actually use this as an opportunity to further layer more and more of those drips on top to give it a little more realistic look. 
Then it's time to test to make sure all your candles are working before you pop those in there and then hang them up. I use tacks to attach these to my ceiling, just some clear tacks that you can't really see. And I hung them at different heights so that they had a little bit different effect. And then if you get the ones that have the remote control, you can make a little bit of magic happen. Take a wand, take your remote in the other hand, swish and flick, and they are on and absolutely magical. If you wanna see more testing videos where I test out different variables for fluid painting, want to see any watercolor tutorials or some other art supply testing, subscribe to my channel. Or if you just wanna see some of the art that I create, it's really varied. You can follow me either at Lacey Walker Art or at Rebel Unicorn Crafts on Instagram or Rebel Unicorn Crafts on TikTok where I make some, some funny videos as well as some tool talk videos and I hope that you have a magically creative day.